Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. We're up to part three of this week's episode of the show. We're diving even deeper into our conversation with this week's guest. Let's continue exploring their inspiring journey. If you've missed part one and two, definitely go back and catch up. Also, if you're not subscribing, please, please subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you soon. He does something amazing every day, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, he does. But let me I think watch people should know this. Oh, oh, my God. My brother. Tell us what so, he does every day. Every day. Never, every day. Never, never, never misses. Never. I love this story, people. This is a fantastic story. So at the end of last year, I fell into the worst depression of my life. Oh. This, this, and so it was worse than what you were going through with the jump? I, I think it was. Wow. I mean, every day, what summer, and I, I don't have a memory of this. Summer said, my, summer's my, my beloved said, I would wake up and said, please let me die today. And this is when I'm doing all the things that I'm supposed to do. I'm taking my meds. I'm going to counseling. I'm doing all this stuff. It's just like, what, what happened? So I didn't know it. But at that time, I mean, brother, my brother, dad, my father, I'm going to call him my dad. My dad always been a part. But Summer reached out to John and told him. <laughs> what was going on? And so he. He just knew. Knew what to do. So every day. My brother lives in, in, the mid, in the Midwest, so he's a couple hours ahead of me time-wise. So every day when I wake up, I grab my phone because there's a text from my Amazing. brother. Amazing. And what and type always, of things does he include in his text? So, well, here, you know what? You're going to read today's out. We'll, use, we'll look at today's. Oh, real shit, this. Wow. So... <clears throat> First thing, big day, physical therapy, and I hope and pray it gives you some relief. He, here's the dad part, he will be to do the exercise they give you in between treatments. There's that. Great advice. And then call, calls to Kevin at Beautiful Minds to see if they have, if he is a seminarian who did the spiritual sessions you attended. That's a support group that I was part of before. And then call the main office to see if they hold a weekly or monthly past patient maintenance sessions. Final preparation for presentations next week so you have the weekend to spend with your family when they come back from Lake Tahoe. Me, workout, email, and then once the heat breaks, working in the yard. And there's always a motivational quote. <laughs> Thought for the day. Miracles come in moments. Be ready and willing. Love you. Every Beautiful. day. And then you know what will happen tonight? My dad and I will talk on the phone. Every night? Every night. It's like he, a, I look at that as like a protective, oh. protective blanket for you, and, and he he knows that you need it, right? Oh, he does. Yeah, he's just, and he's also, you know, my brother, my dad. I mean, he hold me accountable, you know. So there's when we talk about, so he will say, he will ask me, "Did you call Kevin? Did you do this? Did you do this?" Did you do this? I mean, so it, it is an accountability thing too. It's not just, it's not just the love and the support. It's also, he knows he's, it's what a father does. Holds mm. you accountable to support you, to encourage you. <laughs> and then I have my fiance that, you know, what she has gone through since the beginning of the year to get me to this point. I mean, it's just like, it was not and that wasn't like a raging fighting anything, but just so incredibly depressed. Do you know why you fell into depression eighteen months ago? The only, the only brother, the, I, I don't. 
the but what summer is adamant about is last year crazy busy i mean i was literally andy all over the world i mean it was just and and my dad would say the same thing he's just like that's why he said you know like hey you can make sure to do this so you have time with the family i just i was out of balance and i yeah. think i think it's actually a great question i think i believe I think what I what I believed was because I was doing still doing the gym and taking my vitamins and everything else. Like oh, that's okay, you know. I could be a little out of balance. And hmm. I'm just the type of guy that that that's a very precarious. I can't do that. Hmm. So I went into the, maybe let's talk about this new therapy, um, and it's called ECT, which is electroconvulsive therapy so a lot of people know it as shock therapy or they've seen it on movies and one flew over cuckoo's nest is that kind of movie and it's, it's not that and it was amazing i've had 32 sessions which is a lot in Most the last patients, 18 months no no in the last eight months in the last eight months in the last eight we were andy in the beginning of the year my beloved was taking me, we're going three times a week. Like the average patient has 11 or 12 sessions. I've had 32, 33 will be on August 9th. Why have you had so many, but the other pe people haven't? I was, I was in a, I was in a, I try to think of a better word than bad. It was uh, just, Cause I think people who are watching this, who are going through maybe not even suicidal thoughts, but depression, depressive moments. I want to get into your head slightly because they, there'll be people watching it going, I'm doing everything I possibly can. Now I'm, you are, you are, you, we, we need to go back in time. We do need to keep, we need, we need to go back to the, um, to the bridge. We'll yeah. do that after this, this moment. But I want to get into your head about the depressive state, which was 18 months ago. And just to paint the picture well, no, for everybody no, else, sorry, remember, the suicidal eight, thought was... Not, uh, not, eight, not 18 months, eight. Eight months like, ago, sorry. Like end of last year. Yeah, sorry. My it's apologies. Okay. I just wait. I just did because I think the recent nature of it is important to absolutely and, and yeah. it completely is, and that's what I'm going to get into right now. Because, but I do want to get into what happened 13 years ago in 2011 with the bridge. I think that's a really significant part of the episode too. But we'll, we'll hold. Just put that on pause for a minute because we're going back and forth, which is great. Which is not a problem. But for those who feel like they're doing everything, you are at this point. Like you mentioned, traveling the world, talking about your trauma, talking about your suicide, one that you've survived, right? And you're doing all, you know, crystal clear what your purpose is. You're speaking on TED and you're doing talks with the, uh, the army. You've, you, you've got a great life. Where I, I really want to dig deep into that bit. Like, how did you enter that space again? Because that mean, is. That is yeah. powerful. You know what I mean? Like you're no, doing no, no, so no, much. It is. I mean, it, 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 I, it, I mean, without, I don't know the exact part. Yeah. Um, so you still figure, are you think, still working through that? Or are you still yeah. trying to figure it out? Or are you kind of letting go and just going, you know what? I'm here. I'm proud. I know what I'm doing. No, Let's I mean, go. I'm still thinking about it. I mean, I really will rely. I mean, so just so you know, so my beloved is a school psychologist. So, so she brings, all, you know, a certain, it's not, she's not just an average person. She actually has some, she's more, yeah. it's like living with a therapist. Um, yeah. So you got the best person in your life. For oh that, my gosh. For sure. Yeah. So I, I, I am going to side with what my beloved said to say you're out of balance. So, but it's yeah. just interesting, literally at this moment with you, because I feel so close to you, I think I just realized what happened was, is. Even though there was the conscious part of me that was like, hey, man, you were like really like, you know, you were in Italy and now you're going to Korea and, you know, you got like, no, you haven't been home in forever and blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, like I knew that, but like, oh, you'd be okay. Cause you know what? I, you know, I, I worked out at this hotel and, and I'm good here and I, you know, had some green juice and whatever. But what I realized, like, like right in this moment, literally, is that I can't do that. Like you would think I would know that, but uh, but I didn't. I can't, wow. and that's important because see, what's interesting right now is I'm in a, in which has been frustrating. 
I'm in quite a lull in my business right now. So, which is, as like I say, it's been really frustrating um, on, on one hand, but there's, there has been some divine aspects to it as well in that if I was as busy at the beginning of the year as I was last year, I wouldn't have been able to do ECT. What? And then the other part is, like, in the last couple of months in particular, my relationship with the kids has really deepened. And part of it is just because I'm happy. You know, That's your answer. So, and then, but to, to circle back on this thing, I don't want it to be lost, so I don't forget, for the folks out there who are listening who, if you're in that horrific place where you're doing everything that you can do, in terms of you know meds and therapy and group and everything else and, and it just ain't working, I would highly recommend if you have access to it to give ECT a try. And I, look, I have no vested interest. I don't. Mm, yeah. But let me let me give you an, let me just give you a benchmark. So right now my life is it it's challenging. So I got bone on bone on my left hip. It hurts like shit. It does. And then I, my business is it's a challenge right now, which I don't, I don't quite get it. I was like, you know, I was like flavor of the month last year. And like, now I can't get somebody to return my email. Andy, either of those three of those two things last year, I would be depressed beyond belief. It just ends suicidal. And I have both of them going on right now. And you know what? I'm not depressed. That's what ECT has done for me. It's so, it is phenomenal. I can't believe it. So yeah, we'll it's, talk to us about you in the room then. So people who are wondering and questioning what it is, talk to us briefly about. Okay, so so what? Yeah. So ETT. So it's electroconvulsive therapy. So here's what it is. I show up, see Doctor Lauren Marasa. We'll talk like, hey, have you been since the last time? Now I'm, I'm once a month now, and while we're talking, she's putting electrodes, you know, little sticky pads around my head. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, anesthesiologist is on my right hand side. And then he's putting the IV in my arm. And then we'll do a little bit more talking. And then the, I'm also doing all 32 of my treatments have had the drug ketamine as well. So they, they put that in there. I, you know, it doesn't feel any different. I know it's made a difference, but I don't, when they put it in yeah. and then right before they put me to sleep, the anesthesiologist always says the same thing. He says, okay, are you ready for your nap? And I say, yes, I am. And I go to sleep. So as soon as I'm asleep, they, they give me another drug that completely paralyzes my body. Completely. And and the anesthesiologist is breathing for me with a with a bag over my uh, mouth. You know we've seen it in movies and stuff. But there's a blood pressure cuff on my left ankle. That blood pressure cuff keeps my left foot not it's not paralyzed. And the reason they do that is so they can see my toes moving are the indication that I'm having a seizure because they're putting they're running electricity into my brain, causes a seizure, lasts between 30 and 45 seconds. And then again, they see my, my toes movement. Then they stop it. Then they give me another drug to unparalyze my body. And then I go into recovery and I wake up just like anybody coming out of general anesthesia, you know, a little groggy and everything else. And, you know, after about an hour or so in recovery, I get a ride home. Start to finish is about three hours. Uh, and you get to go home that day. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, and how I are you feeling when you come out of it? You know, there's been some, I think, especially early on, there were some where I was confused. You know, and, and a little and confusion could certainly could be part of it. But, but we were, again, we were doing these things like three days a week. Because I was in, I, I, and I did, I actually learned a little bit more about this recently that, I mean, I was like in a desperate situation. Like they were, they, my, you know, my dad, Summer, my other brothers, they were looking at some other treatments. But in the, my, my other psychiatrist, Dr. Capobianco, he said, no, 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 those take too long. You got to do this. Like 
you got to do this. Yeah. So you can have some confusion. Um, but like, it was interesting. The last session I had, which was this month, it was uh, on July 5th. I was, I mean, the clarity I had when I came out of general anesthesia was just, I could, like, it was incredible. Amazing. So Amazing. I now do once a month and we're going to do that through the end of the year and then we'll figure out next year, you know, probably stay yeah. out once a month, which, which is fine. Um, and the beautiful thing, my insurance pays for it. There's no copay. Um, my doctor is phenomenal. The nurses, Betty. Uh, Jeremy and uh, Amanda are incredible. Do you know why this is working for you? I mean, is there any, do you know what it's doing at a cellular level or from a neuroscience point of view? Yeah. I mean, so the easy way, brother, to, to is that when my brain has the seizures, it's flooding my brain with brain with neurotransmitters. And so that, yeah. the impact, basically, the, the analogy that, that I keep hearing all the time, I even hear from my psychiatrist, is my brain is being rewired. I was and, about and, to say. Yeah. And, and if I can, I was thinking about this the other day. So when, when a child is raped at 12 years old, while his brain is still developing, it, it messes things up. I think, and maybe it's because I've had so many, I think ECT is actually repairing and healing some of the damage that was done 50 years ago. And I say, I say this mm. because I've, I've had more and more days in which my response to things is so much better than it's ever been. You know. it, it's like it sounds like um i was hypnotized on leading our own way it will have been published by the time this episode drops nice. and i we focused around anger of what mm. i held on to and at the end of the session it, it was like he rewired my brain because i couldn't respond to what he was asking me because it's not that i had no memory of my fear that was there before or anger before the uh, recording but i couldn't answer his questions i was I was really struggling to take my mind down that neural pathway to figure out my answer. And so I can, re can relate a little bit to what you're saying. Well, not a, lot, a little bit, a lot. You, you, it's like it's acting as, as, as a bit more, it's kind of like hypnotherapy, I suppose. You're rewiring the brain and it's making you not go down that line of, of memory from that point of 50 years ago, like you just mentioned. Right. Well, and I, I said this to my dad the other night and, and he said, he said, well, his thinking is, because ECT took away, has taken away the depression. I mean, really, has taken it away. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I'm not like, ah, my gosh, this is like, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm sad. I'm upset. I'm angry. Those are not depression. No, they're Those survival emotions. Exactly. They're, they're essential uh, survival emotions right. that humans have had for 7 million years living in the jungle that right. they clear, definitely needed to escape whatever they needed to escape. And for the most part, people are not going to die from disappointment. They're going to die from, from depression, but not disappointment. So, so, so what, my, what my dad was saying is, he says, I think it's because ECT took away the depression that the other things that you learn, Beautiful Minds is this incredible place. I love it. I love the name. Isn't that a great name for a, like a place of um, psychology, psychological treatment? I mean, they have yeah. like a mental health place. Absolutely. And their main guy, Dr. Daniel Binus, one of the greatest human beings on the planet. Love that man. He's just an Amazing. absolute angel. I just, I like to give him, every time I, I, last time I saw him, I said, I love you. He says, I love you too. I just, I just love this man. So my, my oh. dad said, he thinks all the stuff that I learned at Beautiful Minds, because I did their intensive outpatient program in the fall of last year before I took my dive. So, and that's, you know, it, it, it's an intensive outpatient program. Like you're going, I think we went every day. It was pretty intense. So now, you know, I don't have this depression that I remember because I bet, because I'm like amazing. Like sometimes I'm going to walk you an example. So I was talking to Summer yesterday 
and considering hiring somebody to help us with marketing. And I'm like, okay, well, I got to get it because you know I'm, I'm like, you know, desperate. You know, all right, well, whatever. We put on a credit card and everything else. And so Summer is driving with the girls. They're going up to Lake Tahoe and so one speaker. And I'm, I'm getting frustrated because she's challenging me with what I think at the time are stupid questions, which in reality are brilliant questions. But I'm speaking with a pointed tone. So I'm not, you know, I'm like, uh, well, what is it? And I just want the call to be done. And so she says, well, why don't you do, you know, this and this and this? And I'm like, no, whatever. And so I said, all right, goodbye. So now in the past, I don't. I would have stayed in my position of righteousness for quite some time, but I'll bet Andy. I mean, it was within the hour I realized. Like, well, what I, what I did was I did the things that she suggested that I do that I was not going to do. Like, well, check the guy out. Check check the per, check the test the person. He has a testimonial. Look at that person's website and check this, you know, blah, 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 whatever, all these specifics. And so I did those things and did these other couple things. And as I'm doing them, I'm realizing, like, oh, my God. You're right. 100% right. And, I, and, and so, so I sent her this long text, first apologizing. And, and all this is saying, this is not about me. It's about what I've been taught. I don't, there's no way I would have, I would have been able to re reframe and get to that place where I could say, ultimately, you were a hundred percent right. Not just on this point, you were right on this point, this point, this point, this point, and this point. I don't think I would have been able to get there. I mean, that would have taken shit. Well, I mean, it could have taken like maybe never get there, but if I could, it would have taken easily a day. But to be able yeah. to do that in it, I was talking yeah. to my dad about that last night. You know, I think he's right. I think it's that EZT took the depression out, and then all what these brilliant people helped teach me on these these other ways to you know, different ways of being. I think it's easier for me to access that wisdom and put yeah. it into action. And that's amazing that you found something that works for you. That really is. Oh, isn't it? It's. It, and, it, I was talking to a therapist the other day, and she said, "Man, when it works, it's incredible." And so, for some people, I assume ECT might not work. You know, it wasn't. Yeah. And I, I could be the, the poster child for. But you know, I've, I've got to say that the staff. It's just, I was in recovery on my last session, and Amanda was standing over me, and we were talking, and she said, "David, I got to tell you, of all the patients, we were pulling for you the most." <laughs> well, because they know what you, they know your your journey, don't they? Um, no, they do. They, they yeah. absolutely do. They do. But it just you know to have that kind of like yeah. Let Let's go back to the nineties then, the late nineties, because okay. uh, we're going to fill that gap up to your two thousand eleven journey. Yeah. Okay. Yep. You, oh, this is good. Yeah. Um, let's go. So you, you met your former wife in 96. Is that right? Deanna. Exactly. And you, you, you've done some, and you have a, a, a great, oh, I don't even know how to say it. Um, you have great words about her and. Oh, she's incredible. I, I love her dearly. I tell her all the time how much I love her. And she. Will, and this is your ex-wife. <laughs> oh my God. I love, oh, I, I, I adore my, my former bride. Oh, but you I did love... some amazing things together too, we right? We did. Well, we didn't talk really. to us about that before before we go down. So we cause... met. So we went. So I was in the. So I, I got a new career. Got into um, to become a loan officer in a bank, and so that's where I met Dee, Deanna, and so fell in love and, and got together. Lived in uh, Sacramento, and and the mortgage business was really good. So it was, you know, doing well financially, and we moved out. And was able to buy this just like storybook, picture perfect, perfectly rectangular, two and a half acre par parcel of land in this little town called Penryn, which again is about 30 minutes from Sacramento in Northern California. So like two hours from San Francisco. So had a, um, ended up that the, the people who sold the house were these like aunt and uncle's best friends. 
So, I mean, the serendipity was incredible. So we remodeled and then did a, did a significant remodel. And when I met Deanna, initially, she had a Boston Terrier. I don't know if it was a Boston Terrier. It's kind of like a, a Frenchie, like a French Bulldog. A little different, though. So I had a, a Boston named Wally. And I wasn't, you know, I love dogs, but not a big deal. But, man, I just fell in love with this beautiful woman. And we took Wally on the plane with us twice back to Washington, D.C., where our, our parents were to visit. And so he became this just huge part of my life. So when he died, we got, we knew we were going to get a puppy. So we got a puppy, a, of course, a Boston Terrier. And then at the same time, Dee found this other puppy that was born almost exactly at the same time who was born 100% deaf. And she had been returned. Nobody wanted her. So we got her too. So, we, so the one puppy was Hope, and then we got Harmony was a deaf puppy. So here we are, and we have this. And then, you know, I have to go back and I have to ask Dee. I don't know how it exactly started, but we started rescuing animals. And here we had these two and a half acres. We had this huge house. And the house was like 3,500 square feet. And just she and I and, and Hope and Harmony. So, and Dee has an incredible heart. I mean, Deanna's heart is just massive. So, we, the animals that we adopted were all the animals that nobody wanted. So, we brought in most of the animals that we adopted were dying. Or they had, in some cases, Andy, they had li literally been thrown like out a window or a door or whatever, or burned or kept in a box or just like, good God. I mean, so, so we did no adoptions. And this, then at one point we needed a, needed a name and, and we came up with the name A Chance for Bliss because we had adopted the first two Boston Terriers that we adopted were Chance and Bliss. So one thing led to another, led to another, and then we became a nonprofit. And then, and then all of a sudden we had 100 animals living, living at the same. We had 25 horses. We had 23 dogs, all of whom lived in the house. We had nine pot belly pigs. We had goats and sheep and ducks and geese and bunnies and birds and turtles and fish. We just face and i literally picked up every single piece of manure every day i mean the place was that clean and and andy you would walk into the house and there were like at, at any time there were always like 23 dogs you know that one would die and we'd get another one people would say well wait where are all the dogs and they'd look around like oh okay they're here and they're here and they're here like but they didn't all grow up together how do they get along and I, and and you know what i think about it now is it, it was connection you know, we, 100%. we cook, we cooked for them. We brought in massage therapists and acupuncturists. They did. We brought in healers that did energy work. I mean, it was, it was incredible. And we had people with, we had adults with developmental disabilities from different uh, non, non-profits came and, and would come and, and work at the sanctuary. And it was phenomenal. I, I mean, it was incredible. Was this your job? Was, were you earning money? No, I was still working. I was still doing the mortgage. So there's where there's okay. where the money was coming from. And we right. we had, you know, we we had become a what's it called a five hundred one c three, which is a non where you can get donations. But then the mortgage industry um, in like oh eight oh nine really contracted bad. So we're like oh my, and then like we were going to lose the house, and, and somehow. We we were, we were incredibly blessed. We were featured in USA Today, and so we were uh, we were the half page cover story in the life section of USA Today. Amazing. And so it was. I mean that, and this was so. This was like two two thousand eight, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Um. So this is before Venmo and PayPal and stuff like that, and so people. And God love God love my former bride. This is how just how just an example of how great she was and still is. Yeah. So we we got I mean Andy we were getting these just like all these checks every day. So Dee said 
me. Because our neighbors, Ron and Marianne, Steve and Janie, um, Fred and Ann, were incredible supporters. I mean, they let us put animals at their house so we could do more. And we would go clean up and everything else. And then we had other neighbors that were incredible. So, so Dee, Dee thought, she said, look, you know, this, it's, it's taken a, a whole village to do this. So we had this huge square table. It fit like 10 or 12 people around it. So, she, so Dee invited all our neighbors. And then she divided all the stacks of checks of mail so everybody could open up and have the experience to see what they played a part. Wow. And then you know what was amazing? Deanna. D opened the very last check and it was for twenty thousand dollars. And this was like But my, wow. my former bride, it just she's um so this whole time I'm I'm mentally ill. I mean just call it what it is. And high functioning. Yeah. Um, From what? I, I well, I think I think I think From it was what? I think it was the rape. I mean, I Andy, yeah. they, that that it still impacts me. I I hate my body. I mean, no, it, it just I I if I could take a shower with my clothes on, brother, I would. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.